The book is a very familiar scripture, two verses, Psalms 15, 1 and 2. And 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17, beginning Psalms 15, 1 and 2. Lord, yes. who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Uh-huh. Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Yes. He that walketh uprightly uh -huh. and worketh righteousness yes. and speaketh the truth in his heart. Amen. Second Corinth, First Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Know ye not uh -huh. that ye are the temple of God? Yes. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Uh -huh. If any man defile the temple of God, uh -huh. Him shall God destroy. Yes. For the temple of God is holy. Uh huh. Which temple ye are. Amen. We thank God today for the reading of his word. And we're going to use today for a little thought. Lord, who shall abide in their tabernacle? David is asking a question here. And he's talking to God. And he's saying to God, I'll paraphrase it. I want to know, Lord, who is it going to be that is going to be able to dwell in thy tabernacle? You see, God is an awesome God. He said, I want to know who shall dwell in thy holy hill. And God said this, he that walketh upright and doeth righteousness. I want you to know today that if you are going to dwell with the Lord in his tabernacle, you are going to have to be right. It's a lot of people today is turning away from God and God's righteousness. Well, I want you to know that you won't be there. Amen, because God is looking for a holy and a pure people. The Bible said the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout all the earth, beholding the good and the evil. Second Corinthians 3 and 16 said, Ye are the temple of God. Ye are the temple of God, and you are the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. That's what it means. You, we, are the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. You know, praise God, a lot of people feel like that they can do anything in this tabernacle that they are big enough to do. But the scripture te teaches us, ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price. And since that we are over on God's side, he said, now glorify the Lord in your body and your spirit. But there are so many people today, they want to go to heaven. And many said that they are on their way to heaven. But they are not living to please God. You see, we have a God to please. And this body of ours must be presented to God, holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable sense. Which lets us know that God is not going to just take anything. And God is just not going to have anybody, just any old body in his tabernacle. We're going to have to be holy, walking upright, and speaking the truth in our hearts. Amen. We must reject all forms of immorality and sins. You know, there's a lot of people today 
is trying to pull the people away from true holiness. Whether you know they say, you know what the word is now, the old word now is, you don't have to do all of that now. You don't have to do all that you used to do. And some people sit up and laugh and make fun of how it used to be. But I have a little news for you this morning. You can't make it to heaven in your sins. I don't care who tell you that you can. I'm telling you that you cannot. Amen. We're living in a day and time now that uh, seem like in churches today, it have turned out to be a plaything. You're not going to be in the tabernacle. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is tired of men's wicked ways. Well, you say, Sister Murray, y'all talk about sin all the time. How come you talk about sin? Well, when you come out of it, we will absolutely quit. see a need today that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ need to be strengthened. Amen. We're living in a time now that I never dreamed that I would ever see a day that they would, before they would go into the service, have some woman or some man to come up and tell about 30 minutes of jokes. And a lot of them are making fun of the church. A lot of the jokes is talking about how them old women uh, got, wore them long dresses and got tangled up in their skirts and amen. They're telling funny. That's not funny. Amen. Anytime you got to come to church and listen about six or seven lies before the preacher get up and lie. You're in bad shape. But I want you to know today that God is calling for pure, clean, holy living. God is looking for men and women that is for real. Hallelujah. Have come out of your sin and left them behind you and told the world, I'm gone. I won't be back. Many people today are doing the same thing they used to do. They started off holy. Started off clean. Now you went back. And you picked up everything that you put out. I ain't going to do that today. I could go ahead and tell you all that you picked up. a little mercy on you. Because if you can't say amen, just go ahead and say, oh me. I don't understand. It's hard for me to comprehend the church world today. It's hard for me to, comp to comprehend how that they feel like the folks that say, I heard a preacher say yesterday. And I don't listen to preachers to criticize them, but I, it, it, it struck my attention. I, I had the TV on listening at a minister, and he said that you get saved, and God wash you under his blood, and you can't go to hell. No matter what you do after then, that at the end, God is going to just go ahead and take you in because you once been born again. And the way he talked that if you've been born again, you don't have to be born no more. But that's the argument. That's what Jesus was talking about. He said, Nicodemus, 
You must be. You got to be born again. I can hear a nigga demon say, well, hi, Lord. How can I enter the second time in my mother's womb and be born? That's an impossibility. I'm a grown man. But I heard Jesus say, you must be born of the water and the spirit. That's the Holy Ghost. That's what gives you that new birth. Second chance around. Lift your hand and praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God said, be ye holy, for I am holy, says the Lord. I don't mind being called one of them. Oh, sometimes people, you're out in public and people say, uh, are you one of those homeless people? Some folks are scared them to death. Uh, uh, yeah. Lord, let me stand on the mountain and cry out holy. Let me stand on high on the hills and cry out holy. I'll tell it downtown Dallas. I'll go to Austin and tell it at the capital of Texas. I'll go to the White House and tell it. I don't mind telling it nowhere. God is in my life. God is looking for godly people. That's not a shame. Do you know there's people that are ashamed to own their Lord? Yes, it is. Jesus said, if you be ashamed to own me, amen, I'm going to be ashamed to own you when you get before my Father. Lord, I don't want to get up, get up before Jesus and he tell God, say, I don't know her, but I want to know him. Don't you? And I thank God for one thing today that I do know him. And he know me. The church on earth is indeed a, a tabernacle, but it's God's tabernacle. See, that's what I'm glad about. God owns this place. This place that we are in. Now, I understand plainly that the church is in us. Amen? We are all a big body of people that love God. And the building ain't, that's not, that's, you know, you can have anything hanging outside of a building. But the church of Jesus Christ is in us. Oh, hallelujah. God said in 2 Corinthians 6 and 16, Ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and I will walk in them. Who all today has got Jesus walking up and down in your soul? Oh, I'm not, I'm not going to ask you to hold your hands up. Oh, but you know, I can feel him walking. When you get to talking about it, when you get to thinking about it, you can feel him walking up and down in this tabernacle. We know he belongs in this tabernacle. Glory to God because he lets you know that he is there. Glory to God, hallelujah. He said to abide in this tabernacle. But to, but to abide in this tab tabernacle, you must shake off all manner of sin. You got to get rid of the sin business. And this is why Jesus came in the beginning. Is to conquer sin. And get rid of the sin business. Amen. And we just have to quit the sin business. Do you know sin is what's taking over everything. And people you're going to have to be careful. Because if you don't watch out. Satan is a sneaky little devil and big devil. He comes sometimes in small packages that look like it's not no harm. And then there's another time he come great big and you know it's the devil. But there's another time he come acting just like a child of God. But I want you to know you can't let him dwell in there. 
you have to send him away from there. Listen, praise God. He want to know. I want to know who's going to stay with me. Who's going to dwell. Dwell means to stay. Uh, all over the world today, people are turning their back on God. Who will dwell in thy holy hill? The Apostle Paul's strongest warning to everyone was, who are building this spiritual tabernacle, he said he that defile the temple of God, him will God destroy. Everybody that got a hold to God, hold on to him. Don't have selfish ambition. You know, it's a lot of people think about just myself. Amen. Don't have selfish ambitions. Promoting false doctrine. Lord, you talking about some false doctrine these days. It is. I said, my God. I had have, I have a certain Christian channel on my uh, television. I didn't know it was on there. And I've been having the TV for I don't know how long. <laughs> My grandson, uh, Brother Herman Jr., said to me the other day, he said, Grandmama, say, you got a certain channel on your TV? I said, I said oh, I, I, I have? He said, yeah. He said, turn to certain such a number. And uh, I, he said, I'm quite sure you got it. I've been had the television two or three years. And I turned to the channel, and I had it. But you talk about some mixed up folks on that channel. I said, Lord have mercy. Praise God. And I, I, I went to trying to think, now what did, after I found the channel, but what did I get out of it? What did, you know, we are living in a day and time that people, honestly, is all mixed up and folks just running to everything. Everything that they hear, they run into it. But let me tell you something. You better stand on a firm foundation. The foundation of the Lord standing for sure. Now that's one thing we're sure about. Having this seal that the Lord knows who is his. Now in this tabernacle, no storm of life can tear you from its foundation. Oh, if you want to stand, you can. Amen. No storm of life can drag you from his anchor. It won't uproot you from his place, in your place in Christ. Can't nothing hinder you when you say yes to the precious will of God. Nobody can stop you. Amen. The gates of hell, you can get up to it, and the flame leaping out can't hurt you. Who is it going to abide in this tabernacle? Amen. But he that walketh uprightly, uprightness is the soundness of all of the grace of God. Uprightness. Amen. And your walk must fit your talk. It's a lot of folks talking about it. But you don't even know the man. A lot of folks come tell you, honey, I know Jesus as much as you know Jesus. All, of, all you know about Jesus is his name. Because I want you to know today, you got to get him on the inside. And let him dwell on the inside of your tabernacle. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And work righteousness. Amen. I want you to know today, before any man, any woman, boy or girl can work righteousness, you've got to be righteous. You cannot do it. And this is the reason why that the world population is failing. Because they don't know Jesus. Amen. And they can't work righteousness. Light have no fellowship with darkness. 
What about these people that don't quit doing nothing that they ever done? Come down and confess Christ. And, uh, people today don't even worry about you getting the Holy Ghost. They just tell you, I want you to come and confess Jesus Christ in your soul. And they hand you a little piece of paper and say, now you're saved. I want you to know it go further than that. Folks walk down for a dry-eyed religious, a religion. They walk down, say, you want to be saved? They come down dry, laughing, chewing gum, laughing. This ain't no plaything. You about three feet from hell. Walking on a slippery slope. But people today don't take God serious. And people don't present him as a serious God. They do not con consider that he is a consuming fire. Amen. God is nothing to be played with. And if you're going to be right, be right. But we're living in a day and time now, they tell you, say, oh, just come on down. And people walking down by the thousands. Nobody leading them really in true repentance. Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. Anybody can say that. I knew a lot of men that knocked their wife all upside the wall and fight her and beat her up and she's black and blue. And they say, I'm sorry, honey. And come back next weekend and do the same thing. You just saying you're sorry, amen, not going to get it. But you've got to get saved. You've got to mean this thing to the saving of your soul. Until you ask God to come in and baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Give you something, hallelujah, that you are not going to go out and sin. You know, a lot of folks, they don't know why they keep sinning. You don't have the Holy Ghost. I don't care how long you've been in Mount Zion. If you still in your sin, you are not saved. Well, Sister Mary, I've been a deacon for 30 years. That's 30 wasted years. 30 years wasted. My God, it's a day in time to get right with God. You know, a lot of times that uh, people look at us and say, well, y'all, that's all y'all preach about is what people do. Well, what else do you preach about? Amen. A lot of folk got them something soft and nice, you know, to talk about how Ruth and Naomi came across the desert, how sweet Naomi was to Ruth, and, you know, and how Ruth loved her, and how Ophrah left uh, Naomi and Ruth, and, you know, now that ain't going to get you nothing. <laughs> Honey, Naomi and Ruth done come across that desert, they trusted God, they believed God, and God made a way for them. God opened doors for them. But what about you now? Your soul needs saving. You need to come out of your sin. You need to trust God. Hallelujah. Because if you trust him and never doubt, he'll surely bring you out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless his name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. We've got to work righteousness. We've got to do it God's way. Who shall abide in that tabernacle? This is what it means. Not he that talks about righteousness. You ain't, you're not going to be there just talking. Just running your mouth. There's a lot of folks on the job running their mouth more than anybody. They don't know nothing about God. Not he that thinks about righteousness. Well, I think I'm going to get saved a little bit later on. Not him. Not he that hears about righteousness. Well, I heard about it. 
I heard how God was saving over there at full gospel. I'm going to check, check it out sometime. But he that do it righteous. Not he that backbited with his tongue. That's in that chapter. Hallelujah. The Bible says a tongue is a fire. Set on five hell. In other words, he tells you more hell can come out of your tongue than anything you got. Woo, Sister Mary, did you? Yeah, I said it. The Bible said it was set on fire of hell. Your tongue can be hellish. It can kill. It can kill just as bad as a person that shot you down, down in the street. That tongue can kill. It can kill you as dead as somebody that stabbed you with a knife. And some people just take their old tongue and wag it and wag it. Say, ooh, in the first song at the church, they're out on the floor. You're nothing but a hypocrite. A lying hypocrite. Weakness. Wicked. We're living in that day and time now. My God. Only God can bridle your tongue. It's, it has been many people killed from church. Come loving the Lord with all their heart, soul, and mind. And get to talking with some hypocrite. But say, Sister Mary, do y'all have hypocrites? Y'all ain't the only thing, right? Y'all, you can't say y'all don't have no hypocrites. I didn't say that. Church is where the hypocrites go. If they go into the club, they just a sinner out there in the club. If they go to a movie, uh-uh, they just uh, sinning and got off of God's territory. Amen. Well, I believe I go to the club with my husband. You are just a hypocrite. You don't have no business in there. What a day. I'm talking about church folk. Amen. I, I, I don't, we, Pastor Murray and I have never claimed that there haven't been hypocrites come through here. Amen. Look at somebody and say, is it you? No, don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Praise God. Deuteronomy 19 and 16 says, Thou shalt not go up and down, that means the street, as a talebearer among thy people. That's what Deuteronomy 19 and 16 says. Let's say it again. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Gathering folks, some folks walk around to gather up. They just like got a basket, look like gathering up tales and rumors, inventors of evil things. Sometimes when the people get through uh, inventing stuff, I tell you, it's a, it's a mess. When they get to it, add a little bit of that, subtract a little of this, divide a little of that, add a little of that, multiply a little of that, and honey, when they get through with it, they got a great big mess. I want you to know that there are people like that. They love to stir up wrath and gossip. I'm closing. But Roman 1 talks about a reprobate being given over to reprobate, whispering, backbiting, in whose eyes a vile person is condemned. You got some people are flat. Lord Jesus. Who will it be that's going to buy? I'm closing. 
If God is in their life, they'll be there. Those that are faithful to the end, they'll be there. The Lord said, be thy faithful unto death, and I'll give you a crown of life. But there's many people say, God, I ain't, I'm not going to church alone Sunday. They come on Sunday. But God said, be faithful. He said, I'm going to pay every man according as his work shall be. And that's the reason why we as Christians, we have to get up and work and do the will of God because we're going to get paid. Now, I don't want to be sitting up in heaven. Well, I, I want to get there at any cost. But I don't want to be sitting over on the side with no crown. And if he's giving out crowns, I don't want to be sitting over on the side with a plain crown. Because I haven't done nothing for God. I want some of them starry crowns. I want to hear him say, come on up. That you've been a good and a faithful servant. And you were faithful over a few things. Those, those few little things you could do, you did it. Come on up and enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Praise God. They who strive to enter in at the straight gate. Ask them people that don't want to walk crooked and sneaking behind bushes and sneaking behind buildings and sneaking, saying a whole, doing a whole lot of things you know you have no business to do. Amen. Those that's going to go straight and enter in. My God, they that overcome evil with good. When people talk about you and criticize you, ostracize you, set you aside. Amen. When they do that, amen, you want to be good to them. You don't want to be like they are. You want to be like the Lord. I said to you today, if you want to abide in God's tabernacle, and let me tell you something. Time is running out. It's running out. Can't you see the time we're living in? Everything that Jesus said would be happening is happening in this day and time. Wars and rumors of wars. Lord Jesus, the people is killing folks, shooting them down, and talking about it like it ain't nothing. We wiped out 200. That's 200 souls. If they wasn't right, they went to hell. And it's almost like, say, well, we sent 500 to hell today. My God. People don't think anything about it. People are even kill you thinking they're doing God's service. My God, it's, this is the day and time that Jesus spoke of. He said, because iniquity shall abide, that being love, leave out of various individuals, people that loved God. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Amen. This is a chilling time now. The love is waxing cold. Everybody standing. Praise God. Glory to God. Young people just made pass by old people. Look at the man who went crazy the other day and turned up on his com comrades. Killed two of his officers. People that don't, don't nobody know where death is. And a lot of times you're walking down the street and people say, I just believe I want to run over her. She looks like she thinks she's something. That's the time we're living in. So we're going to have to struggle and strive to live 
in the tabernacle with God. And the Lord won't let the devil take it away from us. We can hold fast. I don't care how the winds of life blow. I don't care how the storm rage in your life. I don't care if your husband walk off and leave you with 20 children. God will make a way for you. God will stand with you. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you stand with God, don't you worry. God is going to stand with you. A lot of people today is wondering. We don't know the seriousness of what's going on. One day next week, we don't know. Wall may be, have made it to America. Do you know what you're doing standing out of the ark of safety? This year, America could be almost wiped out. These are the last days. And the Lord told us not to be terrified. We can have peace in our soul. He told us to look up our Redeemer draw it now. Jesus is soon to come. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.